Ice race. Ice race, finally, huh? Very exciting. Did you see the track? Like these yeah. figures are dope. The most difficult part will be the, this tunnel. What we didn't know yet was that the most difficult part of the weekend of the biggest prize race of the year, the ice storm race in Milwaukee, was that code set to brick all orca goggles was already living on every pair of goggles in each racer's bag or sitting on their heads just waiting to activate and turn them into bricks. This left 20 plus racers at the Ice Storm race and several like Heads Up and Killian from the Drone Racing League at WDC International Race in Turkey with a goggle that would boot up to a dead bootloader screen or worse to a random company that no one knew. Ransomware is in the news constantly. Is that what this is? Is it a disgruntled former employee, an unpaid bill, or just a random coding mistake? Uh, uh, uh. We're here at the Ice Storm race, guys, where there's a little bit of drama going on today. Of all days, this is the Y2K for Worker Goggle. We found suddenly, as you did your second plugin of the day, something about the date in the original code was left in and it falls the goggles to brick. All of the pilots that are flying Orca had to do one of two things. Brick it on purpose and go through the procedure, which involves doing some very sketchy surgery on your goggles or like Yvonne did, tape his power connector on so that you don't remove it on accident out of habit. If he would have done that, bets are off. goggles brick for the day, but he made it through all five rounds of qualifying. This is the kind of thing you have to do. There are four screws here, right? See, I should have like ripped it off, right? <laughs> okay, so we took it out. Now I'm gonna plug it back in. This is the second plug-in. Let's see what she looks like. Oh no, bootloader mode. She's dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we got some work to do. Have you go bricked your goggles? I've bricked my goggles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you boys bricked your goggles yet? Kids it's so cool. Nothing like, like a little like, extra like, stress on race day. Like, yeah. I bet like Orca and all these, they're like, uh, like, you know, it's bad for Orca, you know, they're probably like nervous all, but I kind of enjoy this story. You know what I mean? It's just something to discuss. I don't know, I like drama. So I enjoy having HD Zero goggles today yeah. Hey, but like you gotta mention another drama, right? That like HD Zero okay. here for some reason, way worse than analog. It's, it's really it? bad. If you ask me, because I brought three analog quads with yeah. Orca goggles, if you ask me, knowing that happens, would I bring HD Zero quads instead of analog? No, I would still bring analog, <laughs> fix the goggles, I wouldn't fly HD Zero here. Really? No. Like, it's still well, flyable. It's flyable, but do you see the picture? HD Zero VRX is mounted awesome there. That it should be good. Yeah, it should be good. I don't know why. I don't want Carl to send like a Hitman for me. So <laughs> HD Zero is awesome everywhere. Well, except here a little bit. What are you gonna do? So this is it. You see, I got tape to make sure Neil doesn't unplug my shit. And I'm gonna take it off and see if my goggles are breaking. Cause now they're working. I just qualified number five. And tiny trainers with these goggles plugged in. They're still working, unplugging. Five seconds pause, plugging in. Yeah, it's down. Wrecked. Wrecked. Damn. Now, now recovery procedure. Do you know how to do that? How to do the assemble? I've never taken my Orca goggles apart. It wasn't hard actually. It was like a few screws. Yeah, but now you gotta jump it. These guys, experts, figure it out already. I'm gonna go and do this procedure. We wouldn't learn the truth for a few more days, but what we learned early Saturday morning as qualifying started that the second power up of the day would leave your goggles break. On the floor of the ice race, when we realized that the goggles were not working, everyone was forming a plan. Lamone asked me if he could use my HD Zero goggles with rapid fire to fly his analog drones. Of course I agreed, but one problem could arise. We were racing in the same class, so at some point we may have to race each other, leaving one of us to fly line of sight. If you did not already plug them in twice and brick them before this was discovered, you could leave them plugged in for the entire day. Never unplug them like we're in the habit of doing and hope for the best. Of course, this would just buy you a few hours as we all had to return Sunday for finals. A few things 
bought us some time. Saturday was race qualifying day, so most pilots had a large window of five hours to run five qualifying attempts. A news crew was also there floating around that caused another break where a few pilots could get away with flying line of sight. Chris Thomas, the head of MultiGP, was on site and helped us get the word out that there was a series of steps in place released by Orca. Once the initial rudimentary fix was released, he set himself aside digested all the steps and came up with a plan to help each racer. Matt Sidewinder, who also provides FPV tech support for one of the major companies, step in as well. Thank you very much, Matt. Who's me? Hi. He's the... I had an assembly line of Orcas just going. Orca, I should send him an invoice. I think yeah. I can do that later. <laughs> Along with a pit full of drone enthusiasts, we were able to resuscitate each set of goggles, having to open them carefully one by one and apply metal tweezers to two tiny circuit pads after painstakingly opening them and applying a special file onto the SD card. Making the game, baby. I think today you'd had to touch goggles more than Derek. No, that'd be hard to do. <laughs> it's still uh, not worth it. Yeah, Derek still have way more hours to goggles three times again, five again. <laughs> Even if you aren't a software developer, you're likely aware of the concept of a piece of code being hidden in an unsuspecting system. This precise surgery had to take place again and again and again during the qualifying. Each pilot holding their breath, hoping that they would not be the first failure to fix. One frustrated pilot with a V1 set of goggles that did not have a fix yet sold them for $150 on the floor of the race. Workers made public statements saying that they were wronged. The company Swarg has now made public statements stating this was not a ransom. It was an expired license that was not paid for by Orca, which led to this happening. I'm not sure which is correct, but I can say that we should all have some patience and understanding for Orca right now. Swarg has released a fix binary file that would clear the issue, but Orca is saying that users should not apply a fix from a company that performed this ransom attack in the first place. Swarg is stating this is not ransomware at all, simply an expiring license which Orca didn't pay for. Who's right? I don't have all the details to determine. Check out Mads Tech's channel, who's been discussing that side of it more in depth as future news rolls out. If it sounds too incredible to believe, much less confusing on which side to believe, I will say that Tony Vlaco and the Orca team cares about this industry. They're some of the biggest sponsors of drone racing, not just capitalizing off the industry, but giving back, fueling it, donating their time, their engineering, and their resources. I've personally hung out and had dinner with both of them several times. I wasn't always the hugest Orca fan, especially when they came out with, with their initial Kickstarter, something that was unfamiliar to FPV users. And I was always quick in person to tell them what I felt were their shortcomings or what I wanted as a user to come out in a future release. They're always receptive. I know that some are frustrated at their releases or development timelines, but what is clear is that they care. They are present, they listen, and they work hard. I can't imagine how few hours any of the staff at Orca were able to sleep over the weekend, so thanks to all of them for their incredible work their quick thinking for ensuring that not a single racer missed a single round of racing. If you have a set of goggles that are bricked, wait patiently. Orca will have you taken care of. I never thought that I would see something like this happening in our hobby. And now that it has, it was fantastic to see a group of 64 racers band together to ensure that nobody won due to an equipment malfunction and that we fixed every single pair of goggles before the last round round of racing took place. If you'd like more from me, please subscribe or join my Patreon. I'll have multiple videos about the ice race coming out, my experience in it, as well as racing from Tiny Trainer and Open Class. <laughs>